Fuller, darker eyelashes are a physical trait that is considered pretty desirable in the cosmetic market. In this episode of OkiTalk, ophthalmologist Amita Vedada explains what prostaglandins are and the part that they play in treating glaucoma, as well as in the prescription over-the-counter eyelash enhancing serums. Dr. Vedada? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Aki Talk. Today, we're going to be talking with Dr. Amy Vedada, who is an ophthalmologist out of New York State. Dr. Vedada, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, fantastic. It's, it's great to uh, be together today. So I, I heard you're in uh, Jersey City today. So welcome. Thanks for uh, joining us remotely. Thank you for having me. You know, I, I am really interested about today's topic, uh, and uh, especially because, um, you know, this particular ingredient's used so much in cosmetic, but it, it didn't start there, right? Uh, but before we get to that, can we just get a little bit about your background and specialty? Sure. Um, so I am a board certified ophthalmologist. Um, I've always known I've wanted to be a doctor and actually um, received admission into medical school during high school. Um, I completed a combined undergraduate and medical school program with Villanova University, um, actually on a full academic scholarship, and completed medical school at Drexel University College of Medicine. I went on to do my ophthalmology residency. I knew I wanted to be an eye surgeon in, um, in med school and um, was chief resident at what is now Mount Sinai Health System. I then did a one-year uh, fellowship training at St. Barnabas Medical Center in cornea and external disease. Um, so I've cur currently been in practice for about 15 years. I um, am a clinical spokesperson for the American Academy of Ophthalmology, and I'm also part of the medical review board at the U.S. News and World Report. Well, it sounds like you have a very extensive background. So it's certainly uh, impressive. <laughs> Thank you. It's it's taken a while to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can imagine. I can imagine. Well, you know, one of the things that we wanted to talk about today was prostaglandins. Uh, and, and I think this is an interesting topic um, because my understanding, and, and certainly you can expand on this, is uh, prostaglandins are used a lot in cosmetics today, but that's not where they started. Um, so can you give us a little background on, on what, what is a prostaglandin? How are they used today and where did they come from? Yeah, absolutely. So prostaglandin analogs are topical drugs that are commonly used to treat glaucoma by lowering the intraocular pressure. Um, I probably prescribe prostaglandin analogs every day to patients with glaucoma. Um, they are the first line of, of medication treatment for glaucoma. Prostaglandin analogs mimic the function of naturally occurring prostaglandins, and they increase fluid outflow of the eye, which lowers the pressure of the eye, and that's protective against glaucoma. Prostaglandin analogs are very effective at treating glaucoma. So I think in in uh, in recent years, you've been seeing a lot of changes where, uh, yes, these are used for glaucoma, but suddenly you start seeing uh, prostaglandins in eyelash serums and other things. And, and so how does how does a drug that was originally for glaucoma become an eyelash uh, extension serum? <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a great question. So prostaglandin analogs were originally approved by the FDA in 2001 to treat glaucoma, but um, doctors noticed an interesting side effect, and that was that eyelashes were becoming longer and healthier in patients that were on these prostaglandins. Um, and so this led to the use of prostaglandin analogs in eyelash serums. And in 2008, Latisse became the first prescription uh, FDA approved product to grow eyelashes with its active being a prostaglandin. Um, and so the beauty industry quickly responded and created their own prostaglandin analogs. Um, but again, because beauty uh, and the cosmetic industry um, is labeled as a cosmetic, they don't need to go through the FDA um, and their labels aren't required to list the side effects of prostaglandins. Um, so prostaglandin analogs extend the antigen phase or active phase of the eyelash growth cycle to make eyelashes grow longer. And they also stimulate the production of melanin. So the eyelashes appear darker. Um, 
However, while they are able to lengthen eyelashes, they can also have many other side effects that can affect both vision and cosmetic features. That was the first thing when I first started hearing this, um, that was the first thing that I thought of, right? Like when you're talking about something that's a glaucoma treatment, you've gone through years of testing, right? Uh, you've gone through clinical trials specifically geared towards this drug as a glaucoma drug. Now, obviously when Latisse came out, I'm sure they went through the same things, but a lot of what you're seeing nowadays, and I, and I think you touched on this, is there's a lot of quote unquote cosmetic products that have this drug, which is a drug, inside of it, right? Is that, is it safe for daily use, uh, you know, for, for prostaglandins to be used every day like that? So I would recommend prostaglandins for treatment of glaucoma. Again, they're very powerful and strong glaucoma medications, and they prevent vision loss from glaucoma. However, because of their cosmetic side effects and potential for visual side effects, I would not recommend eyelash serums for cosmetic enhancement of eyelashes. Um, side effects can build up over time. Um, actually, a survey of 154 current and past cosmetic uh, eyelash serum users with prostaglandins in them um, showed that 40% of people who tried cosmetic eyelash serums with prostaglandins dropped out of using these serums. And the main reason was from the side effects. Can we touch on that for a second? Um, you know, you, you, you talked about how prostaglandins help with the uh, outflow of, of moisture from the eye and, and, and different things. I may not be saying that correctly, but uh, how does that affect, if you were using this cosmetically, I mean, I, I think we can understand that uh, if you have glaucoma, right, we want that, right? Like we want yes. the pressure to go down because you have, a, a, you have too much pressure, right? So some of that going away is a good thing, not a bad thing, right? So how, do those, how does that compare when you're using this cosmetically and what are some of those side effects that you could see? Yeah. So the most common side effects of prostaglandins in eyelash serums take the form of a common allergic reaction, irritation, redness, inflammation, itchiness. Um, it can also cause dry eyes and swelling of the eyelids. Um, so the same way that prostaglandins um, enhance the darkness of eyelashes, they increase the melanin production and that, that increases the darkness of the eyelashes. That same mechanism can cause darkness around the skin of the eye um, and, and that creates dark circles around the skin of the eye. Um, and so not only can your skin get darker, but your eye color can get darker as well, especially if you have green eyes. And unfortunately, the darkening of the eye color is actually irreversible. Um, prostaglandins can also cause a drooping of the eyelid and a loss of fat around the eye, given the appearance of kind of like a sunken in eye. Um, there's actually a clinical term called PAP or prostaglandin associated periorbitopathy that refers to these very common constellation of symptoms of prostaglandin use, many of which uh, may or may not be ir irreversible. I, I'm sorry, when you're saying that the eye color changes, right, are, are you saying the entire uh, eye color changes or is it just where the application is? Um, no, it's the iris of the eye. So the iris is the pigmented part inside of the eye um, and that darkens and, and that's a, a permanent change if, if that occurs. So... It, and these are things that can happen, you know, and, and I think, Dr. Vedada, one of the important things to stress here is, you know, when you have a, um, when you have an RX drug like Latisse, like those warnings and things are on that label, right? And it, yes. it'll say, these are the side effects. These are the things that are going to come. Uh, but I, I think what we're seeing more and more often is some of these drugs that are, or not even drugs, some of these cosmetics, they don't mention that they have prostaglandins in them. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, yeah. And so again, the beauty industry um, is not regulated by the FDA. Um, so the difference, I mean, Latisse has a prostaglandin and these cosmetic eyelash serums also have prostaglandins, but the difference is Latisse, because it's regulated by the FDA, has to abide by the rules and list all of these side effects and be very transparent of the ingredient. And so a lot of these cosmetic eyelash serums that have prostaglandins in them uh, are not listing the potential side effects of prostaglandins. And I think that is kind of where the problem is. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, and there was certainly something in the news probably about four years ago uh, that there was a crackdown on this uh, because there was a lot of these cosmetic uh, eyelash serums that had prostaglandins in them weren't listing that and people were having side effects. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, you know, Latisse, the active in Latisse is the same medication, bimetoprost, that is used in glaucoma medications. The prostaglandin analog that's used in this, uh, a lot of cosmetic eyelash serums are kind of their own synthetic prostaglandin that's not used in glaucoma treatment, but it's also, it's still a prostaglandin and it um, still has the same side effects. Is eyelid hygiene going to have any effect on that? Uh, in, in terms of, uh, is it going to help or hinder or uh, what difference would that make? Yeah. So eyelid hygiene is absolutely an important part of eyelash health. Um, it's going to reduce inflammation at the oil glands, um, which are located at the base of the eyelashes, and it's going to promote eyelash growth. Um, it's, it's not going to counter these side effects of prostaglandins and eyelash serum, but if you're not using a prostaglandin eyelash serum, eyelid, eyelid and eyelash hygiene um, is going to promote uh, eyelash growth. So it, it, do all eyelash serums contain these, uh, contain these prostaglandins or these growth hormones? And if not, uh, obviously uh, people want to have fuller, longer eyelashes. That's why these products exist, right? So there, there's certainly a desire for that out in the market. If, if some of these cosmetics with prostaglandins in them are not the best idea, are there uh, alternatives that, uh, that people should be considering? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, there are eyelash serums that do not contain prostaglandins. Um, they include alternative formulations, um, which have ingredients such as castor oil, biotin, peptides, caffeine, and plant-based growth factors. So here's a question. Let's imagine I'm, uh, I'm out in the world, I'm on Amazon, I'm on the internet, I'm looking at different products. Um, now they may not list a prostaglandin as an active ingredient. Is there anything I can look out for on the, uh, on the box to kind of know that this has a prostaglandin in it? Maybe this isn't what I should go for. Yes, that's a great question. So any ingredient with prost in it, or P-R-O-S-T, um, such as isopropyl cloprostinate, which is a, a popular prostaglandin that's used in cosmetic eyelash serums, that's, um, that can tell you that the ingredient is a prostaglandin. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, is there anything else that we we missed about prostaglandins? This has been a very interesting uh, co concept, you know, to see that you had a, a, a product that originally uh, started out as a glaucoma drug. And, and frankly, as you said, and as I think anybody with glaucoma would attest to, worked great in that instance, right? A fantastic product for dealing with glaucoma. Then you had a RX product, again, uh, went through the proper channels, uh, you know, did their studies, did their tests, and uh, properly labeled the box. And then all of a sudden you had all these copycats that started making OTC products with the prostaglandins, but not mentioning it. And we talked about all the side effects that, that go with this. And I think one of the important things that you mentioned, doctor, is, is about how to look for that prost on the box to see if, you know, if it's not labeled on there, but it's, it's contained in there, then maybe that's questionable. Yeah, yeah, no, I think it's always so important to look at the ingredients. Um, and like you mentioned, look for signs of a prostaglandin, like that having that prost in it. Um, and I think it's, you know, important to just remember that cosmetics are not subjected to the same um, rules as FDA uh, approved um, uh, products are. And so I think it really um, becomes very important on the, you know, for the consumer to kind of have the knowledge um, and, and go through the ingredients properly and, and kind of make their own informed decisions on uh, the, the safety of, of the product. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Vidada, this has been a very interesting conversation today. I really enjoyed you being with us at, at such an interesting topic and such a, a great guest you were today. So thank you very much for being thank with you. us. Thank you so much for having me.